Alright, this is your own little hell. Would you like to share it? Oh, oh, getting oh. ice cold. Me too. That was weird. I don't know. Oh, well, I should feel it over here. It's like. Yeah, there was a. I don't get I know it. this is your own little hell. You made it, and you're not going to share it. Is that right? Make the K2 move. I know you're on this side of the bed. Haunted hotels and spooky old cemeteries. She's the one that committed suicide in room 301 a couple weeks ago. No! Yeah. Ah, dang it, I walked right to her. Oh, crap. Is it when you were talking, did she lead you over here then? Somebody did, yeah. I don't know who. The quaint town of Wilson, Kansas is a hot spot for paranormal activity in the Sunflower State. Oh, I'm on a four. You're on a four? Three. And I got goosebumps on the back of my neck. Really? Down the two. All right, who's standing next to me? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're dead. Wilson has a rich, historic past. It was home to many Czech immigrants. Today, there is a giant egg, which is a tribute to their culture. The town even had its own opera house. But sadly, it was destroyed in a fire back in 2009. Most of the town's records and history also went up in flames. The Midland Hotel is a historical landmark. $2 million was spent to renovate the hotel the second time. It was renovated the first time after a fire burned it up in 1902. The hotel was built to accommodate train passengers, but the Great Depression hit the hotel hard and eventually it fell into disrepair. Another claim to fame for it, the 1973 film Paper Moon, starring Ryan O'Neill and his daughter Tatum, was filmed at the Midland Hotel. Jason Roberts from Road Trip Paranormal gave the Unexplained Cases team a few history lessons about Wilson. The trains, when they were coming in right across the street, they would stop in and everybody would get off down at the bottom in the basement of the hotel and around the 1900s um, during right before the fire and after the fire guests would come in here and they'd sit and wait for their hotel or hotel room uh, the next train they would get dinner uh, but they'd also set up shop in here to sell their items anything they were trying to make money on uh -huh. um, and that's why they still call it today the sample room so, you can get a room at the Midland Hotel, and if you're hungry, grab a burger and shake at Grandma's Soda Shop and Diner. Wilson certainly has a lot of character, and ghosts too. In 309 here is where they continuously see a little girl named Rose, at least that's what they dubbed her. Right, we have no idea who she is, but staff and guests have seen a little, a little girl, probably about 8 years old, red hair. She's either sitting in the corner, sitting in the chair, over in the window seal. She's uh, messed with the bed. Nearby, in room 305, supposedly a police officer took his own life. Yeah, it was right in here. And it was this particular room that the hotel has had um, a lot of complaints about right. this room. Um, people down below, in the room down below, will uh, hear movement, all kinds of activity. They will call up the front desk and ask them to, you know, can you cut it out up there? Right. And they're like, well, we'll get to the bottom of it, thank you. And then they don't have anybody up here because they really try not to book this room if they don't have to. We teamed up with Jason and his fellow investigators from Road Trip Paranormal to investigate the Midland, the old abandoned dentist office and apartments on Main Street, and the spooky old cemetery in the town. Now, we also hooked up with other Kansas area ghost hunters and a psychic paranormal investigator who goes by the name Michael from Nebraska. Michael yeah. says he has a special relationship with the dead. And I, that's how I found out when I was a kid. I could always see dead people, and they'd come up to me. That's what scared me, because not only can I see dead people, I can see them if they're really upset in what's called their death state. Okay. The moment they died, if they were in a bad car accident, I'm seeing that. If they were burnt really bad, if they're mangled, you know, I'm, lo I'm looking right at that. Early on, Michael says he tapped into the energy of the police officer who killed himself in this hotel room. No, he's not going to come up 
come and show us anything. He's locked in. He doesn't want any. This is it. This is his hell and nobody else is coming in. All right. This is your own little hell. Would you like to share it? Oh, ice cold. Me too. That was weird. Oh, well, I should ones. feel it over here. It's like... Yeah, there was a... I don't get I know this is your own little hell. You made it. And you're not going to share it. Is that right? Make the K2 move. I know you're on this side of the bed. Let me tell you, the activity was very intense in that room. The K2 meter was detecting changes in the electromagnetic field. It was a possible sign of spirits. Also, the temperature was dropping and all the investigators were starting to get chills. Look at that, you keep triggering it when you say red orb. Look at that. Yeah. Are you here? Is that all of a sudden crazy? What, what's... Need to, like, what's going on with the red orb? Yeah, what is the, what's the significance? Are you him? the red orb that was on that bridge? Ooh, the that worst, air's crazy. getting heavy. Across town, road trip paranormal investigators were connecting with the spirits in the old upstairs abandoned dentist office and apartments on Main Street. The lower level is Grandma's Soda Shop and Diner. What is absolutely amazing about this location, on the second level, it is like a time capsule. Items from the 1950s, 60s, and 70s left untouched in the building. Now this location is haunted with the spirits of its former tenants. The team's SLS camera mapped several ghostly figures uh, while up there. He's sitting on the stool. There right sure one, is. Do you see that? One sitting yeah. across the stool. Yeah. That's crazy. He just left. No, there's, well, look at this one here, though. What's that guy doing? Just kind of it's almost like he's hanging on that water tank. No, the water tank's right there. Okay. He's right there to the... Oh, he's back. He's right in front of you, Jace on that bench. These figures were captured on the SLS camera in multiple locations. Can you high five Jason? See right there is Jason. Okay. In red. Yeah, he put his arm up. Yeah. Yep. He's still you up there. Did you see him? He's high five. Yeah, oh Look yeah, there you go. Yeah. Look at that. He's high-fiving you. That is crazy. Back at the Midland Hotel, Michael and his team moved on to Rose's room, and the paranormal activity picked up right away on the Mel meter and camera. Come on, sit over here on my knee for a minute and talk to me. How you doing, kiddo? A little crazy, isn't it? Is Rose your real name? Ooh, I just had an orb that just went... Yes, right. she likes me. Yeah, she did. As soon as Michael mentioned the bed, an orb shot out of the frame and flew across Michael. Are you hiding behind the bed? I got a silly feeling you're hiding behind the bed on me, aren't you? Yep. Ooh, interesting. Orb went right across you and then shot right down into the K2 meter. Good. I don't think it's... I haven't had any bugs up here the whole time. Uh, I've been here for two days. I'm getting chills in and out and in mentally here. We also had some spikes on the Mel meter, which is just like the K2 meter. It was detecting changes in the electromagnetic field, spirits trying to manifest. Oh, I'm on a four. You're on a four? Three. And I got goosebumps on the back of my neck. Really? Down to two. All right, who's standing next to me? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're dead. Now back over in the haunted basement, things got incredibly creepy. I possibly had an encounter with an old janitor who is said to haunt this space. Ooh, some bad juju in this room back here, man. Uh -huh. Woo! I, yeah. Oh my God, what happened back here? This is freaky in here. Dude, ang I feel anxiety. I feel, I feel like, like the hair standing up on the back of my neck. Oh, there's something weird going on in here. I don't feel comfortable in here. That's weird. I don't ever See, get I never get freaked out about anything, but this is just something weird back here. To appease the man, the owners put up a pair of long underwear in the boiler room, just like he used to do many years ago when he was alive. And apparently, he was back again. Is that you over in your drawer again? Can you go ahead and reach your arm out one more time and let us know that you're actually there and it's not uh, mapping something else. 
Put your arm out. After an eventful visit on Main Street, we took the investigation on the road to the town's haunted cemetery. Michael was drawn to the dead as soon as we got out of the car. She's the one that committed suicide in room 301 a couple weeks ago. No! Yeah. Ah, dang it, I walked right to her. Oh, crap. Is it when you were talking, did she lead you over here then? Somebody did, yeah. I don't know who. Unfortunately, we were unable to verify if the woman who took her life at the Midland Hotel is the same one that oh, Michael connected God. with. But his ghostly encounters were far from over. He walked all over the cemetery with me running behind him, connecting oh, with the spirits. Okay. I just had this person say, come with me this way. I did. And I kept looking at this, you know, we were running three, five, fours. Right. And then boom, I tripped in the fresh grave. Stop. Oh my God. Walk right to it. Stop. Cheap, bitchy. Uh, I mean, that's not going to be spooky to a lot of people. But well, it's, to kind me, of, it's, it's, it's a, quite a coincidence since yeah, we're at the, at the hotel. Time. Oh my gosh, that's that crazy. was telling me before we left the. About the shoes out here? He says sometimes they were even running next to me. While a little unnerving, it was one of the most powerful experiences for the Unexplained Cases team. There's like an old guy that supposedly, I don't know, Michael, if you feel anything, there's like an old guy that's a curmudgeon that'll throw stuff every once in a while down here, or um, he just doesn't like he's people. Over here. He's, he's over here. He's in there. Do you guys have any uh, equipment at all? Or? I think this is where he actually threw something at somebody in here. Really? Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Is he pissed off at first being here? Or? He's not a happy guy. I don't think he ever was a happy guy. Really? What kind of room is this anyway? This is a two-part room. When you when you say he's in, like, is he just kind of wandering around back here? Or? I don't know if I came in here last night. Oh, okay. This room back here, I had a lot of issues with last night. I don't know what's. Uh, there's something I don't like about this room. Yeah. This is the only room in the, since I've been here in this town. I do not like this room, and I don't know why. Is that his place or something? Yeah, or? This is his area. Yep. Yeah, yeah he, he was he was not very happy. Uh, something last night, I got sick in there. How you feel, Joe? Yeah. So he's in there right now, you think? He's here. I want to go... Anybody want to take pictures of Orbs? Oh, I'll tell you what it's like. Yeah, I'll tell you what it's like. To the naked eye, are you seeing him? Or? Sorry, I just... No, I did the fine. hell out of Just you. Stop. I should have warned you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in this side. He's down there. Is he, uh, I mean, I'm not really a big provoker, but do you think he would throw something at us if we're being upset over this, okay. or? I think he's a pusher and a pincher. Oh. Any sense that he's got a problem with women, or? Nope, just no. people in general. Just people in general. He doesn't like people in his lair down here? I can't figure out why he's still here. Yeah. He's like, where the hell is my chocolate coke? He's been here a long time. Are you thinking like 20s, 30s? Yeah. What was that? Oh, what was that? Heard that? I so heard that. That's what happened last night. That's when it sounds like the ch yeah. there's banging upstairs. It sounds it like the it's like the chairs are moving across the floor up there. Yeah, it did. It was. Oh, HVAC system maybe. Oh. Uh, damn it. I could be. Is he is he in this room with us, or is he still back in the corner?
I'll tell you what, he's you can hear the guys talking back over that. Draining, my, draining my batteries. And I'm not showing anything. Nothing. I'm right here by all the two all there. Five. Does he does he like us being around his clothing that's hanging there? Well, I just had a spike and then it went away. Did it? Yeah, as soon as I hit this. this well, spike. last night uh, we had that whatever the little camera doohickey thing, and it was like the the little guy was actually getting in the clothes, which was kind of crazy. He was a naked ghost. Is like get. Oh. This is his. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I think this, this is he's. he's, he's yeah. I think he's like a maintenance guy, maybe or something like that. Or. There's no old furnaces down here anymore, but that somehow is what I'm getting a feel for. Does he know? He can sense you then, I guess. Yeah, or? he knows I'm here. Just real quiet for a minute and let this guy pop up. Can we just go dark for a minute and be real quiet and see what this guy's up to? If I get a spider that runs across my foot, I'm going to scream bloody murder. Yeah. <laughs> That was a big sound. That was yeah. H-back? Or? There's, that yeah, sounds like H-back. But there <laughs> sounds like there's something dripping over here in this corner. Okay, let's just be quiet for just a couple minutes and see what he does. I heard that too. What was that? Mm -hmm. That's not like an animal. There are two people in here. I, I got nothing now. It's like he's just fell off a man. Is he? Is he? Is he maybe moved to a different part of the basement? Maybe. Or? I mean, I got nothing, no chills, no nothing. He's not one of those guys like the uh, the guy that hung himself. You want to provoke it all, do you? Not really. Okay. <clears throat> uh, right now I've got kind of a mental image of him down on his haunches like this. Okay. 
waiting for us to leave. Oh, he's like hiding from us? Yeah. What happened to him last night? Sir? Uh, well, you know, like I said, that SLS camera, we caught, you know, something going on over there by the, uh, by the clothing that's hanging. Yeah. I just, there's a noise over there I just heard. Right, it's continuously dripping over here. It's like somebody like walking over here or something like that. I guess just from their past experiences that he's uh, done some, I think it, this is the place where he blew in the lady's face. So you guys weren't here last night, but do you guys remember that when we, the, the, the road trip guys played that audio, like mm -hmm. someone, I just shit a brick, is that ring? Right. Yeah, that was down here is where the, the guy blew in her face right here. Bad halitosis. Don't say for them to tell by name. And then he like, I guess he had like threw a rock or something one time down here too. But not when they were here. I, not last night. No, no. This was another. I, they've investigated this like five times, I guess. Right. Yeah, he's like he's setting on his haunches. But no idea what his story is, I guess, huh? No, I got nothing. Older guy. Some of the twenties and thirties comes. Is he is he wearing glasses? Nope. No, a okay. Stupid hat. <clears throat> like a like a train engineer hat or yes, something? Yes, there you go. This guy was kind of spooky in life. Whoa. Now is that the H back? No, that was something different. That was something different. You didn't hear the uh, hair yeah, moving afterwards. Oh, no. oh, there we go. This guy was kind of spooky in life. This guy was kind of spooky in life. This guy was kind of spooky in life. Do you think you, he actually stayed down in this area, or? He worked down here. He worked, okay. So is there any stories of him from the other group, the paranormal group? I don't, I don't know. Like the only one, the only one about the blowing in the face, and then the, uh, um, like he, like back there somewhere, that like there was a rock thrown or something like that. But you had bad feelings back there. Oh, last night I wanted. To, it was just weird, like. I got sick, and I'm like, hey, there's something weird going on back there. And somebody else who was in the group, too, was like, yeah. Where's this? Where is that this cemetery? This, there's a lot of limestone in that room. I don't know. Sometimes I've had yeah. issues with that before. This building was built when? 1900s, right? Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. 1900s. Yeah. This guy, I think, was like the maintenance guy, but not the top of the pick for being a maintenance guy. This was just, okay, you go down here and do this. And he did. Coal. There was a lot of coal down here. There's two coal chutes on the other side of the. Uh, right there. Yeah, right behind you. I mean, yeah, right. Coal bins. Right, right, yeah. Well, and I wondered because we went to a town where they had uh, actually built tunnels under the street. It was mm -hmm. a speakeasy under their coal bins, which you just discussed. Right. There's long tunnels, and then the coal bins are up, and that's why I was looking over here because this looks like the building was built on the side. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And on the the buildings we went to underground, there was actually windows with glass in them. Interesting. Right. In okay. I just heard a bell. Is he walking around? Yeah. I was going to say, I can kind of feel there's like some... Yeah. He's up in the middle of me. Yeah. He's not behind me. He's, he's, he's like over here in this area, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I know. Right there. Let's see if we can turn around the falling down. He's going to mess up and walk in front of the lights over there. It's going to be a shadow. Should I be uh, shooting straight ahead then? 
more towards your right. Okay, I do. Well, is it? Yeah. Is that back there? Is that him? I just can't tell if that's a shadow or just a dark spot on the. I don't want to be unkind to the guy, but he wasn't a full deck player. I Who, mean, his job was real menial. Right. A schlep. A schlep. But this was his world. He got away from everything down here. It was his safe uh, zone, probably. I'm sure the, the coal fires were right here, where his underwear is hanging. You can see the stuff right up and down. Is that what? Mm -hmm. That's what that. What was that noise? That was his water. Oh, water. okay. Yeah, I can see the birds. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so sure he didn't have a cot down. This was his little world. And I bet you if we do some digging, we're going to find out a guy did live down here, died down here, and this guy lived pretty much all by himself down here. Sort of like that guy that's in Tombstone. The, the you Remember the guy that lived down in the basement of that place? They called him, I can't remember what they called him, but he had that little, God, what the name of that saloon was that? Guy. Are you talking about the birdcage? No. No, there's that guy, There was they called him the Swamper. He lived down in the bottom of that uh, restaurant or something, uh, whatever it was, a bar back in the day or something. Oh, uh, uh, Fat Nose. Yes, I said Big Nose Cape. Big Nose Yeah, the Swamper that lived down there. Did they really name that? Well, Matt. Big Nose Kate was uh, Doc Holliday's woman. Right, we she have would... a bar in Salina. Oh, do you? Yeah. making fun of if they named it. Actually, they did, but I don't know why they did. Yeah, I'd like to find out about this guy. This guy. I guess it's just. And kind I of think that area that you got spooked in and that bothered me. Yeah. That kind of maybe was his ad hoc living quarters. Like he had his bed or something over there. Or, I mean, if you're looking for a place to kind of get away, that's you know yeah. enclosed. See earlier. I was at the uh, west end, east end, over on that side, and I felt kind of spooky over there. Over here? In this basement? Mm -hmm. uh, or you mean down through the door? Oh, yeah, yeah, just, up, just yeah, at the... On the opposite end. And I think when I'm getting his underwear that's hanging here that somebody took down, Right. I'm not sure oh, yeah, because this is a replacement. Yeah, that's so, not his. No, the original, they accidentally gave it away, and then it, like, I guess, upset right. the spirit. And so to appease the person, they went out and got another, whatever, from a well, secondhand store, I guess. It's, I it's think, not his stuff. Yeah, I think this is where the furnaces were. Okay. And this is where he dried his clothes. Somebody took his clothes away. That yeah, would have upset me, Yeah, too. He, he was pretty pissed off. Yeah. So I don't know if this is... Satisfying him or not? I wonder if he could make it swing around or something like that, or rock it back and forth. I don't. It looks like it's pretty steady right now. Is he anywhere near us in this vicinity, or has he moved uh, on? He's still back in this yeah, other area. I think his game plan is for when we file out, he files back. He's just like, I'm going to hide in the corner over here until these guys leave. Well, he probably gets like, what the hell, it's another group that just came through here. Yeah. You know, because he probably doesn't, he's like, oh, great, there's another six, seven people that are in my place now? Well, like I said, he kind of liked to be alone. Mm -hmm. Maybe this really does trip his trigger. Maybe if we stayed long enough, he would get to chucking rocks or banging on stuff, telling us I've had enough, it's time for you guys <coughs> to leave. Well, if he's hiding, I don't see him.
venture back to see if we can get to the uh, the cemetery. Let's hope this guy's gonna poke his head out there. He's kind of like right, isn't he? Like right back in the right hand corner. Is yeah. that where you're feeling him? Yeah. Like right back in there, yeah, right? Right in there. Yeah. I, it, it, there's like a little space, kind of like a little area. You can kind of there's a brick wall there. He's kind of. I mean, you can't see it, but it seems like he's kind of like right back in, in there. there. Yeah. That's where I almost. You didn't get any orbs at all either, did you? Well, it's dust. Yeah. It's That's dust. the problem. It's just like it, it just. Some of them could have been. I really don't know. That's the problem. I don't. Yeah, it definitely was. Well, you came down here and stay in this room by yourself down here, you'd probably go pretty crazy. Well, unsociable would be the word. Yeah, yeah, just... He's the Wilson Swamper. Wilson, Kansas, a slice of Americana in the heartland, an old town where the people welcome you and so do the spirits. After our trip, we can say for sure the Sunflower State community is definitely haunted. For Unexplained Cases, I'm Darren Dito.